In this video, we're going to get started by looking at a broad overview of the interface and break it down into its main components. Now we have the browser over here on the left, and this is used to load sounds and grooves into BFD3. We have a kit display over here, there's currently no kit loaded in, and this section over here, and this pertains to the drum kit, the instruments that are loaded into the current kit. We have a mixer in this area over here, used to mix all the audio channels together that exist within the BFD3 engine. We have global controls up here, this whole top panel that runs horizontally across the top of the interface, and that relates to the working with and the managing of BFD3. We have a navigation bar, and that's this thin line over here with all these buttons that we use to access different pages of the BFD3 interface. So let's look at them in detail. The browser over here on the left, we have, first of all, the presets over here, and you just saw me hide it by clicking on the currently active tab that's being used. The presets tab stores the entire state of the BFD3 instrument, and by entire state I mean the drum kit, the sounds loaded into the kit, the grooves, the mixer settings, the effects, it stores the entire state. We have kits over here, and this stores the configuration of all the drums that are stored in each one of these slots. We then have the actual drums page over here, and these are the individual instruments, the individual drums or cymbals that you load into the current kit. We have a grooves tab over here, and these are used to view and store the patterns or sequences that play BFD3's sound engine. And finally, we have an automation page over here. And this is an automation panel that's used for three things. We can assign MIDI continuous controllers, note messages to trigger things in BFD3, and host automation parameters. So we hide or reveal any of this by clicking on the currently active panel, and that'll hide it. And once it's hidden, just click on any of them, and it'll be visible again. And we can double-click a preset to load in or a drum kit to load into a slot. But let's go to presets, and we'll just scroll briefly and load one in just so we can hear some sounds. Let's go with this one. I'm going to double-click, and it's going to load in. We'll see the preset name appear here in a moment. There it is, and the kit piece is loaded in. We see their icons here. And let's move on. Next, we have the kit display over here. So this shows the physical layout of the drum kit, which is comprised of these multiple drum slots. So we can click any of these and hear the drums. So this whole configuration is the kit, and each of these are the actual drum slots. Now we also use the kit display here for linking different drums together. If we want to layer drums so that they sound together when we play one of them, we can hear multiple drums at the same time. Now part of this kit display over here is the drum editor on the right. And this is used to tweak the details of each drum sound. And we have two tabs over here, Tech and Model, and we can click the active one like we could here to hide that whole panel so we can simplify the interface like that. But when we click it, the currently active drum updates here and we have various controls to shape the sound. And in this page, more controls that affect the specific sounds for each individual drum sound over here. Now we have the mixer at the bottom, and this is a virtual mixer for all the audio channels available in BFD3. Now, audio channels are comprised of, broadly speaking, two categories. We have direct and ambient mic channels. So each of these drums has direct mics on them, but there's also ambient mic channels like ambience, overheads, room microphones, etc. And we can mix all of these in together in this mixer setting over here. And we can select a drum in the kit by just clicking on the mixer channel slot. So you see as I click on this, you see it becomes selected in the kit display over here. And we can also access the effects editor, which pertains to the mixer, over here when we click on this tab button. And here, this will display the currently selected mixer channels effects slots and send controls. So, let's say I click on the drum. Here's the drum mixer strip. I'll click on effects. We'll see all the processing that pertains to that drum. If I click on another drum, the processing changes to update, showing the effects and the sends pertaining to that drum, the selected drum. We have a Groove Editor button over here, and this shows the Groove Palette over here, the palette of grooves. And it also shows the Groove Editor here that we can use to edit the grooves in the palette. And it shows the Groove Effects section over here at the bottom. We have a Key Map panel over here, and this is used to create and edit 
custom key map setups to assign MIDI notes to drum articulations. So for example, if I select the snare drum, we'll see here that there are different articulations mapped to different notes all pertaining to the snare drum. They're all snare drum hits, but different articulations mapped to different notes, and various drums and cymbals have various articulations available. So broadly speaking here, we have the kit display over here and the drum editor, and this is used to basically set and adjust the sound of the drum set itself. We have the mixer and the effects section over here, and we use this to process and mix and balance the sounds of the drum kit. And then we have two ways to actually trigger the sounds of BFD3. We have the groove engine. If we go to the groove editor, we'll see we have one of the grooves loaded in here from the palette, and we can play it this way. Or we can trigger the sounds via the key map window by mapping the drum sounds to MIDI notes and then triggering them from within our DAW. So broadly speaking, that's a general introduction to the overall BFD3 interface. Browser area here on the left, over here. Kit area over here, and drum editor over here. Mixer over here. Global controls on the top. And then the navigation bar over here to switch between the different pages. See you for more in the next video.